Now guys, my first custom water-cooled PC is finally 100% complete. I'm going to pan over my entire setup for a second and then I'll turn on the light so I can talk about the components. So the loop is a lot cleaner than if you had watched my first update video. I had some tubing going through the drive bay cages and it was extremely awkward and insecure. I did spring a leak my first loop with the CPU block going into the reservoir having a leak into the drive bay cages that has since been resolved. I am using a lot of hose clamps over compression fittings because hose clamps give me more flexibility to get into tighter spaces where I couldn't have gotten leverage to tighten compression fittings. These two compression fittings going into the top radiator, they're still not as tight as they could be. If anybody has experience with water cooling, tell me whether these compression fittings are good enough or whether I need to tighten them down a lot more. My tool for tightening compression fittings has been broken, so I'll definitely need to get another tool, but I don't think that these have been threaded even once, and by hand threading, I couldn't even get the compression fitting to budge. So I don't know whether that's good enough or whether I need to tighten that a lot more. The tightest nozzles that I have had are these two because the barbs are half inch diameter, but my tubing is only 3 8 inner. So I had to stretch out my tubing to get it to fit over the barb and then use a hose clamp over top of the tubing. So in future, I think I will be using a lot more hose clamps than compression fittings because they have worked wonders for me. For this 360 millimeter radiator, if I had not watched the Linus 900D build, I would have never gotten the idea to mount it like this by screwing it through a fan into the hinge that rotates the fan. Um, a lot of my subscribers, and you guys are completely right when you're saying this, um, have suggested that I should get a different case like the 900D or the Cooler Master Cosmos. But one aspect of my personality that you'll learn about is that I am extremely stubborn. I force myself to make things work instead of reassessing the alternatives and admitting I'm wrong. But I'm either a complete idiot or a genius for forcing everything to fit instead of cutting my losses and getting a slimmer radiator or getting a bigger case, but you guys are completely right when you suggested that I should get a different case. Um, I could not get another fan to fit on this radiator through the back. I should have <laughs> mounted the fan before I mounted the radiator on, so that was my mistake there. I couldn't get a fan onto the front of the radiator because these are the only two slots on the motherboard that you can use to enable tool that <clears throat> I am oh man I have no talking ability right now you can tell how tired I am I'm sorry if there's no emotion in my voice I am exhausted getting this build up um, but these are the only two PCIe lanes that I can use my graphics cards in two-way SLI alright let's uh, move on to the back the cable management is um, nothing impressive do you have enough lighting to see cable management is nothing impressive this case closes easily um, I have all my SATAs and Molexes tucked in under my hard drive and my SSD I don't know if there's any other way to do it so this case is cool in that you can change the lighting to whatever color with just a uh, twisting of the switch up top so that was definitely part of my decision to go with clear tubing so my tubing always matches the color of the case whatever I, whatever mood I'm in um, but yeah I'm gonna show you some stats really quick okay camera has focused these are my idle temperatures I set the multiplier to 46 in the BIOS and I set the voltage to auto so I'm gonna run prime 95 really quickly right, test Oh, uh, bear with me. Advanced test. Wait, sorry. Let me just restart the program. Uh, exited in the tray. All right, here we go. Just stress testing. Okay, small FFTs. Okay, here we go. 100% load. Six cores and 12 threads. So, 4.6 load 100%. My computer hasn't even gotten a lot noisier. Oh yeah, um, my pump does sound like a refrigerator, but one thing that definitely helped with uh, bleeding out the air bubbles was I put a drop or two of dish soap, Dawn dish soap, because it has a degreaser that really reduces surface tension. 
So the small air bubbles disappeared almost, I mean, the effect was instantaneous, it quieted down a lot. I have my reservoir dangling out of my PC because I did run into a very nasty kink in the drive bay, so I had to reduce the stress on this tube by letting the reservoir dangle out of the front of the case. The only drawback to this is I can't close this door. So I think I'm just gonna remove this door for a cleaner look. Let's go back into my overclock. I haven't strained my overclock, I just have it set on auto voltage right now. So it's at 1.424 volts. And yeah, the temps are uh, pretty good for the voltage in what it is. But I mean, I think I can try and push 4.8 with 1.44, 1.45 and still get temps under 80 degrees, but dialing out my fans hasn't really helped with the temperatures a lot. I definitely think if I get another fan onto this radiator that temperatures can really drop. But anyways, thank you for bearing with me through my first water-cooled build. Let me know if you have any suggestions about what I could do to improve the state of the current build right now, especially on how I can get a fan mounted onto the radiator right there and how I can tighten up the compression fittings up here. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is David and I'll see you next video.